उत्तिष्ठत जागृत प्राप्य वरान निबोधत अराइज अवेक अप्रोच द ग्रेट एंड लर्न अराइज अवेक एंड स्टॉप नॉट टिल द गोल इज रीच गोइंग बाय द एडिज इफ इट वॉज नॉट ग्रोन इन द फील्ड और फिश आउट ऑफ द वॉटर then it must have been mined the importance of mineral development for the economic growth of a country was realized in india long back as early as 400 bc chanakya in his kautilya's arthashastra mentioned mines are the sources of treasury from treasury comes the power of government and the earth whose ornament is treasury is acquired by means of treasury and army The minerals are mined through excavation from the earth's crust. To manage and make optimal use of these mines, trained manpower in mining and geology as professionals for the coal and mineral sectors was the need of the hour. During Lahore Congress it was visualized that if the country has to take a shape, if it has to evolve, if it has to become a power tomorrow, it has to become a force to reckon with in the world polity for tomorrow to come energy has to be taken care of and if energy has to be taken care of there has to be a institution from where the suitable human resource for the country will come out because they were already started visualizing the crystal ball gazing was on and that is how this institution was visualized this need became more than obvious and the turn of the last century saw the initial steps being marked for the establishment of a mining engineering institute that would cater to the needs of the nation on the 9th of december 1926 indian school of mines and applied geology was established by the then government of india on the lines of the royal school of mines and applied geology london inaugurated by lord irwin the then viceroy of india indian mines act came in 1901 in the same year the indian national congress demanded that a school of mines in the patna royal school of mines london or the japan school of mines it should be created in india and the uh, british government formed a committee and which was headed by macpherson and it was in the name of macpherson committee and the committee submitted its report that such a school should be established in india that is in dhanbad and the name of the school should be indian school of mines dhanbad indian school of mines ism was established in the mineral rich region of india in the city of dhanbad also known as the coal capital of india ism is located at a distance of 3 kilometers from the dhanbad railway junction the grand trunk road National Highway 2 also connects Dhanbad with Kolkata. The institute initially offered courses in mining engineering, applied geology, supported by the Department of Applied Science, which includes applied physics, applied chemistry, and applied mathematics. later in the year 1957 the institute expanded by introducing courses in petroleum engineering and applied geophysics in 1967 The institute was granted deemed university status by the UGC under the University Grants Commission Act 1956. This added new impetus to its growth. Eventually, flowering of the institute in its real sense took place with the inception of more and more branches such as mining machinery engineering. mineral engineering and 
and industrial engineering and management. which started in 1975, 1976 and 1977 respectively. These courses were introduced with an objective to cater to the needs of industries like metallurgy, mining and manufacturing. From 1996-97, the school came directly under the financial and administrative control of the Ministry of Human Resource and Development Government of India with pay scales and perks for its employees at par with that of the Indian Institutes of Technology and Indian Institutes of Management. In 1998, courses for electronics engineering and Computer Science and Engineering were introduced. In 1999, the Institute started a Bachelor of Technology course in Mechanical Engineering. In 2006, ISM added 40 new undergraduate and postgraduate courses, prominent among them being electrical engineering, and a course in environmental engineering in the undergraduate curriculum. ISM started dual degree programs in mining, mineral and petroleum engineering as well. In 2011, ISM launched an additional course in chemical engineering. The institute introduced civil engineering in 2013. And engineering physics in 2014. has 18 academic departments covering engineering, applied science, humanities and social sciences and management programs. I am seeing that the students today are excelling in their fields, they are looking at new futures, this institution as a whole is growing, I mean, we need to uh, nurture the institution. Especially, I am proud that petroleum, mining and the geological sector in the country has had a number of people coming out of this institution. I wish that this institution grows from strength to strength. No wonder ISM is one of the leading institutes of the country that is engaged in a number of research and development programs. The spirit of innovation is evident in the brilliant research teams and labs that push the frontier of technical knowledge in the country. Numerous scholarships and fellowships are offered annually to students by various organizations for their research. The selection process for the various programs at ISM takes place through IIT JEE, GATE, NET and CAT which are considered to be the country's toughest examinations and it is needless to say that only diligent students get through. 
fetching a desired branch in the institute calls for a high ranking in the JEE advanced. The academic standards at ISM is equally challenging for the students. All engineering branches were opened uh, after 96 one by one and the student admission to all these branches are through the IIT JE advanced system where nearly in the JE main 15 lakh students appear and uh, finally 2 lakhs 1.5 to 2 lakh students were taken in JE advanced out of 15 lakhs and out of these 1.5 to 2 lakhs 10,500 nearly 10,500 students are taken for the admission to these IITs so we get the top student of the country. The Indian School of Mines campus sprawls over 393 acres of land with 218 acres of existing campus and 175 acres under acquisition and development. My association with this institute is fairly for the last uh, 22 years and precisely for the last three years I have been taking care of this infrastructural activities. Uh, I, I can say that for the last six years this institute has been witnessing phenomenal growth uh, starting from the uh, viewpoint of academics, administration, infrastructure, student activities. And there is an overall development pursuit. 17.11 lakh square feet area has been covered under construction and we are planning that another 40 lakh square feet areas will be soon joining the bandwagon. The campus comprises of academic buildings, students' hostels, with 100% residential facilities for students, faculty members and staff. The main building, also known as the Heritage Building, houses the departments of Mining Engineering and Applied Geology. And to add on, the center of attraction of the Heritage Building lies in its Geological Museum. The architectural style of the buildings on the campus is a blend of British and modern day architecture. The specialty of the institute lies in its laboratories such as the Seismic Observatory, Data Processing Laboratory, the Long Wall Mine Gallery and the Remote Sensing Laboratory. It is also equipped with groundwater harvesting facilities. The Penman Auditorium, named after Dr. Penman, the first principal of the school is located in the rear portion of the main building. It is the center for organizing various academic and co-curricular activities. While the Golden Jubilee Lecture Theatre is earmarked for workshops, presentations and seminars. Most of the classes of the students are held at the new lecture hall complex while the inside of the lecture hall complex functions as an open-air theatre. We are functioning since 1974. What we teach here at IIT and if you find the applications at industry, there is a huge gap. So this centre is a face of IIT IIT. The new International Executive Development Centre, EDC Annex, which is meant for international students, has been developed near the NLHC. The upcoming facilities on the campus include Innovation and Incubation Center, the Central Research Facilities and Center for Safety Engineering. Being a fully residential, peaceful and safe campus. ISM has a number of hostels for boys and girls. Diamond Hostel, Opal Hostel, Emerald Hostel, 
Ruby Hostel, Topaz Hostel, Sapphire Hostel, Amber Hostel, Jasper Hostel, Rosaline Hostel, and Hostel for International Students. Most of the hostels are named after popular gemstones. Some hostels date back to 1926, like the Diamond Hostel, while others came up eventually with the expansion and growth of the institute. The hostels are equipped with internet connections, mess and canteen facilities. ISM accommodates guests of the school at the Senior Academic Hostel. The Computer Center supports campus-wide fiber optic network. It caters to the computing needs of the faculty members and the students. The center has a number of state-of-the-art servers and an adequate number of computers. The four-storied health center at the campus has the latest facilities to provide medical care to students, teachers, staff and their family members. The automated library of ISM caters to the need of the users of the 18 departments and other centers and provides services seven days a week. The library houses 85,000 books, 8,000 PhD theses and dissertations, 35,000 bound volumes of journals and 1,200 digital books. It provides access to 2,000 full-text scholarly research journals. The library collection is available online through a web-based public access catalog. Currently, massive construction is in full swing on the ISM campus, a new eight-storied central library designed to be one of the best libraries in Asia and the biggest in any Indian university is about to be functional. Among the other facilities, the campus has a bank, a post office, a coffee house, canteen and stationery shops. We are saturated as far as the landmass today at this present campus is concerned. We are in a process of putting across to the state government of Jharkhand that to give us an another chunk of land could be in the form of another campus where we organize ourselves, other schools and centers and other infrastructure for times to come in future. ISM campus is cosmopolitan in nature as it has students, faculty members and staff from across the country with different religious affiliations, cultures and languages. Apart from a strong emphasis on core technical knowledge, ISM also emphasizes on character building, cultural and literary activities, sports and entrepreneurial domain. The day brings in multiple academic challenges for the students, while the evening offers them moments of joy and recreation by allowing them to engage in sportive and recreational activities, which are exclusively available at the Student Activity Center. The institute has a vibrant campus life. There are several clubs and councils where students can pursue their hobbies and learn new skills. The four years that I spent here were the most uh, vibrant, colorful years of my entire life. ISM as an institute doesn't provide uh, only a platform for you to you know, excel in academics, but uh, it provides you a canvas wherein which you can paint all your uh, 
creativity, all your ideas. The support system was always there, be it our seniors, be it our batchmates, our faculty members. Everybody was so open, so accessible, and that made us think, uh, you know, out of the box. ISM provides facilities for athletics and sports. Interested students are also trained in combat sports like karate, yushu and boxing. Students have to choose among National Cadet Corps, NCC, National Service Scheme, NSS, National Sports Organization, NSO and yoga as a compulsory extracurricular activity. There are various clubs to enhance the students' specific hobbies like dramatics, dance, music, entrepreneurship, robotics, mechatron, etc. Among the various students' social bodies, Kartavya and Fast Forward India FFI, are two such initiatives to develop the society around the institute campus. While Kartavya aims at educating poverty-stricken and slum-dwelling children, FFI organizes blood donation camps, imparts basic computer and English education, and holds numerous career counseling sessions in nearby schools to help deprived students shape their future. Senior-junior interaction is one of the most important aspects of ISM campus life. ISM organizes a plethora of extracurricular activities that enhance the spirit of participation and healthy competition among the students and thus achieves the idea of holistic education. College has been particularly important for me that since it has provided me all kinds of opportunity both for my all-round development, educationally, physically, all kinds of sports was available. So physical activity was also being given a special place in the overall development of the students. One thing the institute has taught all of us, study hard, work hard, perseverance, sincerity, sincerity in approach, integrity, all those values have been imbibed, imbibed in all of us which has been paying, at least to me, a very, very rich dividend. In January and February, ISM witnesses sportive events such as the annual sports meet. And Parakram, in which students put on their track and field shoes for the inter-institute sports meet. Cheers and thunderous applause resonate for the participants and the festive spirit reigns supreme. Pratibhim, an interdepartmental festival that pours the initial drop of high for adrenaline to flow throughout the year, is held in January. Hearts bound with excitement when Basan, the ISM alumni reunion, resonates across the campus in February. It provides an excellent opportunity for the current students to interact with their seniors. Remarkable change that you observe. Well, first thing is number of students. We are 500 or so at the time now. I, think 500. I come to Basal also every year since 2005 because of that bonding. And also I wanted to share something with the students because I got so much from this school. Uh, my teachers, they were loving, caring, they were our mentors, they were our teachers, they were like our parents, they guided us, and whatever I have achieved uh, or accomplished, both in professional life or even personal life, that has been due to the foundation that our teachers and the school have helped me build during my four years as an undergraduate student here. March, August in the moment, 
that is reserved for the traditional hues of culture that is united in its variety. Shrijan, one of the biggest cultural festivals of Eastern India, turns the entire campus into a beehive of activity with the nectar of excitement as participants enthrall one and all with a brilliance reserved for the occasion. Srijan is the annual Inter-Institute Cultural Fest of ISM. The high-profile Techno Management Fest, Concerto, usually organized in October, brings the students' community to one platform to exhibit their best of creativity and talent. This is where all the learning and training comes on display sparking hopes for the nation's progress on the technological and economic fronts. The Students' Fest, sportive events and other related events allow them to exhibit and explore their managerial potential. It is no wonder then that ISM students have brought more than their fair share of laurels for their institution and their nation. Because of the changes in the society, uh, the perception, the behavior of the students and the population, it has changed. So what we have integrated is not only the knowledge or the education which is offered here. We develop a complete person, including the value system and including the ethical, uh, the moral and as well as a complete human being. It's not that he should be only good at studies, he should be also physically strong and he should be motivated to serve the society also in the long run. It's not that he is going from the portal of this institute just for doing a job to earn his livelihood. That's our motto in the educational system at Indian School of Mind Till 1967, the faculty members were recruited through the Union Public Service Commission, UPSC Selection Board. The institute boasts of some highly experienced faculty members, world-renowned for their prowess in teaching and research. The faculty members of ISM Dhanbad have elevated the name of the institution to what it is today. Having obtained their doctorates from prestigious institutes, prospective faculty members undergo a rigorous selection process. With many years of experience in research, the faculty members are indeed the lighthouse for ISM students who excel under their guidance. Those aspirants or young blood, those who aspire to join the ISM fraternity, I would say best of luck to them. Lucky will be you because this is a privileged institution. Here by associating yourself with this institution, you will be associating with an institution which is the third oldest institution of the country. This is a unique institution. It is not one of the run of the mill institution. This institution is part of the general knowledge of the country which is taught to the students. So, aspire, perspire and desire to join this institution, you will be the privileged one. ISM has produced several distinguished personalities among its alumnus who have brought laurels to the country by attaining great heights in various fields. The alumni retain strong bonds with the institute and contribute to its various developmental activities. 
if we see today uh, over the 90 years alumni of this institute are serving in public sector undertakings in the country and also the private sectors private sector companies multinational companies they are also serving in the government of india and in a very senior positions and many of them are also serving different companies in north america and in other places of the world and wherever they are they have contributed and uh, today the contribution of the alumni can be uh, just judged by the fact that 60 percent of the energy production of the country comes from coal and where there are eight companies and out of eight companies seven companies are headed by the indian school of mines alumni some of the alumni have received the padma awards india's highest civilian honors from the president of india vaman bapuji metre of ism's first batch that is the 1930 batch received the padma bhushan in 1968 considered as a pioneer of the indian oil industry he played a major role in the establishment of ONGC. Gulshan Lal Tandon, the former CMD of Coal India Limited, was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 1986. Dr. Harsh Gupta, former secretary to the government of India and a former member of NDMA, with the rank of Union Minister of State, was awarded the Padma Shri in 2006. Dr. Vijay Prasad Dimri, former Director General GSI, well-known earth scientist received the Padma Shri award in 2010 Dr. Ravi Bastia petroleum geologist received the Padma Shri award in 2007 ISM is the manpower provided to 15 sectors and is a think tank for 11 ministries of the government of India one of the most prestigious institutions in the world for education and research in engineering and earth sciences, ISM produces the cream of talent in the country. For nearly nine decades now, ISM has produced many illustrious people who have made the country proud in their chosen fields. ISM remains one of the most preferred destinations of recruitment for leaders of the industries. We have the best interaction with the industry compared to any other IIT and we hope to maintain that close relation with the industry and we also have very good collaboration with many institutes abroad. We hope we should be at par with institutes like say Harvard School of Management or MIT of USA and so on. ISM was ranked 11th in India by the Outlook Engineering Colleges Survey of 2012 and 2013. It has been consistently ranked among the top engineering colleges in India by various ranking agencies. In 2015, ISM was ranked on the 7th position by EDU RAND. Under this office we do have uh, two functions. Uh, international relations and alumni affairs. Under international relations, we do take care of uh, the various uh, international collaborations for the exchange of uh, faculty as well as uh, exchange of students. At uh, alumni affairs, uh, we do look into the various uh, events being organized by alumni. We have Indian School of Mines Alumni Association chapters across India as well as uh, Ismana, uh, Indian School of Mines Alumni Association North America chapter. ISM is also an Indian partner university of the Erasmus Mundus program, which facilitates the exchange of students and faculty members with those belonging to the institutes of the European Union. My experience was superbly awesome. When I reached there, the people were so much friendly, especially the local ISEGERS there helped me a lot and I learned many things. It was a very amazing experience because it helped me develop myself as a person. It let me uh, develop my personality. One of the most amazing things that, uh, about my stay in China was that I was living, living with a host family in China. 
ISM has international collaboration with 14 institutes located in 11 countries. It is also the mentor university for setting up of the Afghanistan School of Mines for the government of Afghanistan. ISM has signed agreements with a number of Australian institutes to collaborate on clean coal and energy technologies. Also, the institute has been helping the government of Bangladesh in its mineral resource planning. ISM is currently pursuing about 600 research projects sponsored by various funding agencies or industries at the national and international level. Starting with 1994, because of the facilities already available in electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, electronics and computer science for teaching the mineral related courses, we decided that we must diversify into other branches by establishing B.Tech courses in electronics, computer science, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering and so on, which are running in IITs. And our standard was already high enough and then around that time, around 97-98, the admission was made through IIT JE. So after that, change of IISM into IIT was only a matter of change of nomenclature which was formalized in 2016. On the 25th of May 2016, the Union Cabinet, headed by the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, approved that a bill be introduced in Parliament for converting ISM Dhanbad into an Indian Institute of Technology. The bill was eventually passed by both houses and signed by the President of India on the 10th of August 2016 and notified in the Gazette of India thus officially converting ISM Dhanbad to the Indian Institute of Technology, Indian School of Mines, Dhanbad. We are the foundation of the, all the industries. Take, take any industry in the world, whether it is a steel, whether it is a power, whether it is energy, whether it is chemical, and uh, whatever you take it, it has come from other act, and which we, some stage or the other, the exploration geologists, exploration engineers and the exploitation engineers like mining engineers and the mineral engineers which process and take it out from the large volume of the ore to a small volume of the value and uh, this ISM has contributed to the nation and the knowledge which has been created in the country over the existence of this institute of 90 years has helped the country to grow in leaps and bounds and all the major mineral deposits all the major oil deposits, all the major uh, the metal deposits, whether it is precious or, or uh, even the nuclear minerals, most of these discoveries and the hands of the Indian, the alumni of Indian School of Mines or the faculty members of Indian School of Mines are there. So this is what it has contributed to the growth of the nation and it will keep contributing in the future. The Indian School of Mines has had a legacy in the areas of earth sciences since its inception in 1926. ISM is the third best earth science institute in Asia. Even though today ISM is no longer just an earth science institute, its contribution in the areas of earth sciences has been and will continue to be of utmost importance in future. Indeed, ISM is an ever-growing, ever-expanding institute that the nation takes pride in. The journey continues. Thank mm -hmm. you.